Welcome back to the XFL Show. JP here with you alongside former NFL coach Kay Stevenson. Coach, our special guest here needs no introduction, but listen, the commissioner of the XFL, we are so happy he joins us, and what a product that he has helped put out. I mean, the XFL is just absolutely phenomenal. As a football fan, I'm so excited. But, Coach, I'm going to let you uh, take the reins here. You bet. Well, we we couldn't uh, say how much we really appreciate it, uh, Commissioner, you coming on for a few minutes with us uh, on one of these inaugural uh, XFL insider uh, programs that we're doing. And, uh, again, kudos. It's It's been a, an excellent product uh, that you put out there, but this is not unexpected. Uh, our audience, I think, very familiar with your background in the in the WFL as a uh, first before that as a player uh NFL quarterback and uh and then in the uh WFL in Europe and uh, what you sustained over there put together and and uh, stayed with and and then as the athletic director at West Virginia many other efforts uh and we just appreciate you coming on and what I'm going to do is ask you to give us uh, the commissioner's state of the union uh, right now of your league. <laughs> a state of the union address. Well, I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet, but uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. It's great to uh, to be with you all. So, you know, we just completed our third week of play, and I think, you know, all in all, we're pleased with where we are. You know, these are brand new teams that really didn't start working out together, training together uh, until the beginning of December. So they they had a good two and a half months of preparation time as we went into the season, but teams are still sort of finding themselves. Uh, you know, we we thought after week two that the DC team was maybe the strongest in our league. Well, they went out to LA and got spanked by the LA Wildcats, who who scored a bunch of points. Josh Johnson, longtime NFL quarterback, you know, just all of a sudden found his groove. So that's sort of fun because you know these teams again are still just in the process of sort of finding themselves, what they do well, what they have to work on, what what they have to improve, you know, who the go-to receiver may be uh, or the running back or whatever. So uh, all in all, I think we've played good quality football. Our television ratings have been solid, uh, and we're, we're really blessed to have two great broadcast partners, Fox and Disney, I mean, arguably two of the most powerful media companies in the country. So, you know, we're, we're uh, not resting on our laurels at all. Um, we had a lot of work to continue to do. Uh, the best thing that we probably have been able to do, right, the best thing, I think, is affordability for fans. So I was in St. Louis yesterday. The Battle Hawks uh, had, uh, you know, what was a, a, a really strong performance. 30,000 people in St. Louis attended that game. And, you know, the average ticket price for one of uh, the, the bottom ticket price for one of our games is 20 bucks. So you can bring a family of four, have good seats, sit in the lower bowl and watch, you know, three hours of professional football. That's that's great. We all lament sometimes how expensive it's gotten, you know, to attend, uh, you know, big college games or an NFL game. Uh, so this this is really satisfying to see, you know, people that don't have to, you know, give up a car mortgage or, you know, a car payment or a house mortgage. <laughs> you know, to attend a football game. So the quality has been good. Our coaching has been good. There have been some great moments. We had a kick return, you know, taken back for a touchdown yesterday in the St. Louis game uh, against New York. That was really fun to see. Uh, And a lot of our innovations, we now have enough data points, even though it's early in the season, we've got enough data points, you know, to say that, hey, our kickoff is working. We have, you know, well over 95% of our kickoffs are returned. And, you know, that's absurd when you think the NFL – you know, 75% of the kicks are kicked into the end zone as a touchback. Nothing happens. So we're, we're pretty pleased with where we are at this point. But, again, we've got a lot of work to do still. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more on exactly what you've, what you've gone over, Oliver. Uh, let, me, uh, let me say this personal observation, uh, and from what I've heard from other people, and I've talked to a number of, uh, of NFL people uh, as well who have scouts and administrators who, who think that uh, this is a very good product. They understand and, and admit totally that there's a market uh, for football in the spring. Uh, so, and, I, and I think your, your, your first three weeks have been above and beyond, and uh, there's a lot more to go. But let me say this. Uh, your rules changes. Many thought were going to be uh, 
prostituting to a certain extent the game of football. They're not. Uh, we've we've tried to explain to people, for example, the kickoff on the kickoff. In order to minimize these 45-yard collisions, you're simply doing what we're near the end of the season, from midseason on uh, in the NFL. That's what we do in practice. We, 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 put a, we still get our assignments in order. And uh, the blocking lane, I mean the uh, coverage lanes and so on, are adhered to. And you get a chance to uh, get all that established without having kids run 45 yards down. And invariably, even if you're just thud tempo, you get somebody nicked doing that. So I, I, think, I think that's working out extremely well. I agree with it totally. And uh, the extra points, I mean, you don't want to know where I was going with the, uh, with the, with the kicking game. Um, my, my, uh, my thought was do away with the kicking game totally. Uh, the most boring plays in football when you went to the refrigerator were extra points and short field goals. That's um, right. No, you're, ab- you're absolutely right. We, in, in our mind, we called those plays meaningless plays. And they're effectively, you know, all the plays in the National Football League that are untimed downs, you know, a kickoff into the end zone. Yeah. That's not timed. It's considered a play, but nothing nothing happens with any value to a fan. And that's true, you know, of, of, of the, the extra points. Even after the league, you know, moved the extra point back, it still has about a 95% conversion rate. That's a... That's a done deal. That's a fait accompli. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's when you get up, as you say, Kay, and you, you get a soda pop out of the refrigerator or whatever. It's also an untimed down. So we, we, we wanted to remove as many meaningless plays as we could. And you know, that's why we had the kickoff. And it's safer. And that's obviously important as well. But that, that's really the, the genesis behind you know, changing the extra point. Let's, let's make that play matter again. And we've had, you know, Three weeks of data points now. It's harder to score, you know, from the five than, than a lot of people thought, you know, because you really can't run it. You got to you got to throw it. Uh, but we, we've had a couple of teams go for three, you know, at yeah. the ten yard line, and, and a couple have made it. So you know, our coaches are are, are working, you know, all, all different angles to kind of come up with a, you know, system of what 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 uh, what works for them. Yeah, you wait till they get all those analytics involved in it. It'll be it'll really be something there. But I think it's I think it's a good. Uh, a good move, and I, I like it. Uh, the play yesterday, Saturday and yesterday, I thought was an enhanced offensive product for the most part. Um, of course, one of the things that uh, you and we all realize is that, to a great extent, the success of the league depends on the quarterbacking. That's what people look at. That's what they associate with. That's but they keep their eyes on the entire football game. So um, as time goes on, those th- the quarterback play will improve, and you'll, you'll, you'll have some other people. I'm certain now you're going to have some quality people uh, coming into that league to give uh, experience and or a competition to the people that are there now. Well, you know, the, it, that, that's that's an interesting point. And of course, Kay, with your background coaching quarterbacks for so many years, you, you would immediately understand this. The guy who's probably playing the best for us is a kid, Philip Walker from Temple, and he spent two years on the Colt practice squad roster. In fact, my son Andrew, you know, tipped me off to to, to Philip Walker, PJ Walker, as he calls himself, because Andrew thought he would be perfect for our league, particularly in an offense like June, where. You know, it's a it's a, it's a sure. quick you know run and shoot one one read kind of a thing. So, you know, our argument to PJ was PJ, you've been in the practice squad for two years. You're going to get out. You're going to get kicked out of the league. You know, because you don't get any better being in the practice squad. The only way to get better is to play football and play in real games with you know with good players on your team and playing against good competition. So, you know, think of how many players there are like. Philip Walker, like P.J. Walker, right now on NFL practice squads, who've been on there for a year, maybe two years. You know, you're running plays off of cards. You're not getting any better. So I, I think as we go into our second season, we'll have a much stronger argument, right? To, to And those guys are talented. They were all college all-stars, really, you know. P.J. set all the records at, at, at Temple, 
You know, Jordan Tayamu was playing for the St. Louis team. He was the old Miss guy. Uh, he's in the same boat. You know, this is a great 10 game experience for him. Uh, and then he can use it to, you know, to, to kind of give himself a better platform. So once this season com- is, is completed, I think we have a really strong argument, uh, you know, about additional practice because virtually every one of the 32 NFL teams has a quarterback on the practice squad, right? That's, that's what you do. You, you put one quarterback in your group of 10 in the practice squad, and he's the guy who's running all the, you know, the, the, the cards, you know, mimicking the, the opposing quarterback for that week. But you don't get any better. And that's, yeah. that's what these guys want. They're, they're football players. They want, to, they want to improve. Well, that's for sure. And there are going to be some college quarterbacks that are uh, rated in that make it category that are going to be, they're going to slide down the, uh, the draft list. And uh, you, you never know what could happen there, too. Uh, somebody could, that's uh, right. yeah, a <laughs> good opportunity. I mean, you, you you know I mean the the you know the, the combine and ranking guys it's it's uh, it's an art and not a science and guys are, are are missed you know I think the NFL scouts by and large do an unbelievable job but there's always guys that you know slip through the cracks small school guys uh, the other guy who had a great game this is a different sort of uh, profile of a player but the other guy who had a great game yesterday out in L.A. you know playing for Norm Chow who's calling the the offensive plays out there is Josh Johnson who has been, I think, with maybe 10 or 11 or 12 NFL teams over the course of his 10-11 year career, came out of the USD University of San Diego, played for Jim Harbaugh there. Yeah, yeah. Harbaugh was just starting his coaching career. But, you know, he's a guy who's got a ton of experience, you know, and for whatever reason was never able to sort of stick, you know, for a long time as a backup in, in the National Football League. But he's playing, he's a 32-year-old guy, but he's playing like a 22-year-old guy. So uh, there's, you know, there's, Everybody's got a different story, particularly at the quarterback position. Our goal is to get the you know, the eight best quarterbacks we possibly can, you know, for each one of our teams, which really means you got to get about sixteen good quarterbacks and let them battle. Yeah, you're right. You know, one uh, and and overall, I can't say enough positive about uh, about the league and what you've done and what uh, all of you have done in putting everything together. Uh, you know, after the first week, we did a uh, little rundown here and I thought New York uh looked like a a good sound solid football team uh going into a new venture like this. I'm a little disappointed <clears throat> in uh what has happened in New York, uh primarily because of the uh the quarterback there over. Uh Matt McClellan I I just wonder uh yeah, you know, I wonder if he's <laughs> if he's got the right idea. Um, but other than that, I yeah. think yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's interesting because you know Matt sort of fits in that you know category with guys like Josh Johnson, who you know played, started, and won. You know, NFL game. Matt won a playoff game. You know, for the Raiders. So you know, Landry Jones is in that category. These are all guys who you know have had had you know, fairly significant experience, you know, playing in the National Football League. Sure. So it, 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 it's somewhat surprising because Landry's playing pretty well. Josh is, you know, is playing pretty well. They both missed their their opening game for their respective teams. But uh, Matt looked great week one, and then he's, uh, he's really struggled. Uh, but it's not just Matt. You know, the whole team has struggled. Their offensive line hasn't played well. They don't seem to have sort of a go-to, you know, guy on a, on a third and six when you just, you know, you got to make that catch. Right, and it's going to be you know it's going to be tight. Uh, so you know, but as I had said early on, I think teams are still now just sort of finding themselves in terms of what you know what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. Uh, there's there's you know there's still a long way to go. You know, this is a ten game regular season. You win six games, you probably are going to make the playoffs. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a five win team, you know, in, in one of our playoffs because you know half of the league, four out of our eight teams make make the semifinals. So, right. um, you know, we'll see how it, how it plays out. I, I still am not quite sure that we've seen, you know, the real New York team at this point. Well, I would agree. And overall, I just, I, I, again, congratulations on, a, on an outstanding job. And uh, I know it's going to continue to improve. And we're going we're gonna to look forward to being here with, uh, with your guys every week, Oliver. And listen, I'm going to thank you again for coming on. And uh, we'd like to hear from you from time to time. Our listeners, I'm sure, would uh, be very appreciative. 
Well, yeah, thank you. Any Anytime I, uh, as you know, love love the game and love talking football with an old coach like you. Well, thank you so much, Oliver. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. You right. bet. Thanks, Kate.